You're watching VTV. Coming up next on VTV. also claim to have seen it. You're not trying to tell me you really believe there's a flying saucer. Here is the dramatic story that rips aside the veil of secrecy surrounding the momentous question of the century. Are the flying saucers real? What are they? Where do they come from? Why are those fellas trying to kill you? Because they knew what the dinkus, where the saucer was. Where is it? To the side ice camp. And now, our feature presentation. morning, I shouldn't be laughing at anything. Now look, Hank, fun's fun, but there's a limit. You call me up in the middle of the night, and you tell me to grab a plane to Washington. And now all this malarkey about flying saucers. Of course, most of these reports are obvious nonsense. Brother, you said it. A lot of highly imaginative people, some neurotic, some just plain liars, all swore they saw the flying saucer. But well, we tracked down every report. We cross-examined every witness. And found out it was all the bunk. Not all of it, Mike. 
Some experts, commercial and Air Force pilots, also claim to have seen it. You're not trying to tell me you really believe there's a flying saucer. I'm not sure. There must be a spark of fire somewhere under all that smoke. Well, even if there is one, Hank, what good is it? Well, if it's true what the expert witnesses say, it'll outfly anything we can put in the air. And it works on a revolutionary principle that we can't even guess at. Yes, Mike. It appears it was designed for one purpose, to carry the atomic bomb. Now, the first country that learns the secret of the flying saucer will control the skies of the world. And I don't want that country to be Russia. Well, if there is such a gadget, how do you know the Russians aren't the ones who are already flying it around? Because we have reason to believe they're looking for it, too. One of our undercover agents has been uh, working inside a communist group that's been operating uh, around this district. Did you know, huh? Used to be quite a town. Yes, it still is. Our last report from our man said that some Russian Air Force officers had slipped into the territory from Siberia. He heard that they were trying to locate the flying saucer somewhere near the Taku Glacier. Russia apparently knows something that we don't. It certainly is a tip worth investigating. Don't you agree? Oh, sure. All part of your job, I suppose. But what's this all got to do with me? Because you're going to do the investigating for us. Are you nuts or something? If the whole intelligence service in the Air Force can't find it, just how do I figure? Because you were born and brought up in Alaska. Because my old friend, your father, still owns most of the timber and the gold mines and the fisheries and the part of the country we're interested in. So that qualifies me as a bloodhound, huh? It qualifies you as a native. Any of our men would be immediately suspected because they're strangers. Well, what about that guy you already got planted up there? Well, it's just possible that something may have happened to him since we got his last report. Now, when you get to Alaska... I'm not going to Alaska. I'm having too much fun in New York. Besides, my polo team starts practice tomorrow at Meadowbrook. Man of distinction, eh? Good picture of you, Mike. And very natural. You're known all over as a sportsman, a playboy, and a good two-fisted drinker. So we'll plant it in the Alaska papers that you're coming home to recuperate from a nervous breakdown. A nervous breakdown? I feel fine. You'll feel even better if you take this job. Oh, look, Hank, it just won't work, so why don't you get yourself another boy? Mike, I'm not asking you to do this for me. I'm asking you to do it for the country. I gave my country five years of my life. That's enough. How would you feel if tomorrow a flying saucer would drop an atomic bomb on every key city in the United States? Would you feel you'd done enough? All right. All right. Stop waving the flag. I'll go. But I won't like it. By the way, I was talking to your father an hour ago over the phone. He told me to tell you that uh, his yacht will be waiting for you in Seattle. That the caretaker would be instructed to get the uh, Taku hunting lodge ready for you. So you had it all planned? Just cutting a few corners to save time. Well, the least you can do, Hank, is offer me a drink. When do I leave? Afternoon plane for Seattle. Here are your tickets. Union nurse. My nurse? Look, our story is that you're suffering from a nervous breakdown. Now, for appearances sake, you've got to travel with a nurse. Look, Hank, I can tell you right now, I'm not going to have any nurse. Send Miss Langley in, please. You want to meet Mr. Thorne? Come in, please. My nurse? Very good idea, Hank. I really ought to have a nurse. I thought you'd agree. The, this is Mr. Trent. Mike, Miss Langley. How do you do, Mr. Trent? Miss Langley's one of our best operatives. The fact that she's also a trained nurse is quite incidental. Oh, sure, sure, that's great. I think I'd better take charge of the tickets, Mr. Thorne. Well, how do you like that? When we reached Seattle, I managed to slip my moorings for about an hour. Then they got me in tow, shanghaied me aboard Dad's yacht, and we were off to Alaska. said, water, water everywhere, and not a drop to drink. 
Three days out, and I was getting fed up with the whole business. Flying saucers. So much bunk. beginning to feel a little better when we were cruising up the inland passage. I'd almost forgotten there was such a thing as beautiful scenery outside of a nightclub. I think he'll come back. If I was him, I wouldn't. It wasn't long before we reached Juno. Quite a town as towns go in Alaska. None of the Stork Club gang ever got up there for. I used to have a lot of pals there. Should look them up for old times' sake. Hey, Skipper, pull in here at Juno. No, Captain Eider. We'll go directly to the lodge. Open up. Come on, open up. Skipper wouldn't drop anchor. My keeper put him up to that. And the fact that I'd let myself in for this little caper didn't help my disposition any. The Taku Glacier in the end of our journey. The hunting lodge was just across the river. So long, Skipper. Pierre. Run away. I'm Hans, the new caretaker.
What happened to old Pierre? I do not know, sir. I understand he just disappeared. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And my father hired you, huh? That is so, Mr. Trent. Oh, this is Miss Langley. The doctors thought I needed a nurse. Oh, what a beautiful view. Did you ever see the Empire State Building in the moonlight? Time for you to rest now, Mr. Trent. Rest? What I got to rest from? Hey, Hans. You seen any Russian spies around here lately? Spies? I don't understand. Spies? You know, Russian spies. There are some Russian fishermen down the Taku village that I know. But spies? That I know nothing about, sir. See any flying saucers? Hans, would you please show me to my room? Take Miss Langley's things upstairs, Hans. I'll Very take good. the room down here. Hey, are you afraid to leave me down here myself? You know, I might get into mischief. You already have. If we knew all the answers, we wouldn't have to be here. Why don't you calm down? Tell me about the glacier. All right. There it is, 18 billion tons of ice. The great Taku Glacier, built by Mother Nature 100,000 years ago. How am I doing? Suppose those men are? Probably salmon fishermen. This place is driving me nuts. It's a funny thing. When I was a kid, I used to think it was wonderful up here in the wilds. Too bad you had to grow up. It's still wonderful. You can have it. V, let's take the skiff and go to Juno. No, Mr. Trent. Okay, I'll go alone. No, Mr. Trent. No, Mr. Trent. No, Mr. Trent. If only just once you'd say yes, Mike. Yes, Mike? Why don't you just relax and enjoy it? We mustn't forget what we're here for. Somebody had a brainstorm. That saucer isn't real. It is real. Ah, oh, it's strictly for laughs. Hey. It's quite a nice snow we got here. We're all ready to stand the siege. Better pick yourself a gun while there's still time. I have an automatic upstairs in my suitcase. Better let me have it. You might hurt yourself. I assure you, I know how to use it. Well, keep that in mind. Oh, I'm sorry, Hans. I didn't know you were out there. Would you or the lady like some more coffee, perhaps, sir? No, thanks. Excuse me, I think I'll go to bed. You, uh, sure you can find your way upstairs over yourself? Do I think I can manage? And what about me? You? What do you mean? Well, I'll be down here all alone with my, uh, pulse and temperature. I might have a relapse during the night. Oh, I think you'll live. You call this living? <laughs> it's lovely when you laugh. Good night. Some pleasant dreams. I doubt it very much.
morning, Hans. Good morning, miss. Mr. Chad up yet? No, not yet. He's supposed to rest, shouldn't he, nurse? Yes, of course. Ooh, all this wonderful fresh air and sunshine. I never knew it could be so warm in Alaska. In summer, yes. Sometimes it's as warm as today, but the big ice that never melts. Oh, you mean the glaciers? I love them. Do you think I'll freeze to death if I take a swim before breakfast? You'll not freeze to death, no, but she will maybe, yes. Morning, V. Oh, good morning, Mr. Trent. See any flying saucers yet? Look, Mr. Trent, we've got to be very careful what we do and say from now on. Oh, sure, there's a Russian spy behind every rock and bush. You may think it's so very funny, but we're here on a serious mission. So you're going swimming? Well, we're supposed to behave naturally. Well, I'm all for that. Hey, Hans, what's for breakfast? I'm starving. few days, Lee Langley and I followed Hank Thorne's orders. At least she followed them, and I followed her. If any Russian spies were watching us, which I doubted very much, they saw only a patient and his nurse, supposed to be enjoying the fresh air, the sunshine, and the scenery. It wasn't hard for me to take when V was a part of the scenery. agent was still around. He never showed himself to us. But while we were waiting for him to appear, well, we weren't exactly standing still. Oh, 
<laughs> Did I make a first down? Baby, you scored. your thermos, Mr. Trent. Red six on a black seven. I saw it. Please, Mike, not now. Well, why not? I get it. We're not human beings anymore. We still hang thorn stooges. For Pete's sake, V, how long does this go on? I don't know. I suppose until we finish our job. What a job. You still don't believe the flying saucer really exists, do you? Oh, sure, like spots in front of my eyes. What's the matter? Hear something? Yes, don't you? Jet plane, maybe. Meteor. Traveling in circles? We certainly don't think it was... Of course. Oh, Hans. Say, did you see anything fun in the sky just now? Only the Aurora Borealis. The northern lights, sir. With sound effects. Listen, there was something up there in the sky, and it wasn't northern lights or any kind of airplane I've ever heard. It was a flying saucer. Yes, I guess perhaps it really was. B, I'm going to Juno. Oh, no, Mike, you mustn't. But, honey, it's the only thing to do. I'll look up some of my old buddies and find out all the dope. There must be somebody in Juno who knows something about these saucers. Mr. Thorne told us to stay here. But we're wasting time. Mike, we've got to stay here until orders are changed. You're prettier than my old top sergeant, but, baby, you talk just like him. Good morning, Hans. Is breakfast ready yet? No, miss, but soon. I think I'll take a little walk first. Oh, Hans. Well, never mind, I found it. Good morning, Hans. Miss Langley up here? Yes, sir. I believe she went for a walk in the woods. Fine. I think I'll take a little exercise myself.
subjects are there. They're dangerous, aren't they? A man was killed by one near here not long ago. Phew. After this, I'd better stay out of the forest when I'm alone. Where's Mr. Trent? He's gone. Gone? What do you mean? In the skiff to Juno, I think. Isn't there another boat here? No. I must get to Juno at once. There's no way. Oh, yes, there is. There's the barge from the gold mine. It always stops here. Well, I better get dressed. It'll be Scotch. Look, Mac, we recommend the rye, see? Sure, I'll play it safe. Okay. It's a long time since I've been to Juno, looking up some old friends. You don't say. Uh, Chuck Thorpe used to come in here a lot. You know him, don't you? No. Nope. Spike Ainsley? Well, you must know Matt Mitchell. He's quite a character. Never heard of him. Say, uh, did you notice anything funny around here last night? You see a lot of funny things in a joint like this. No, no, I, uh, I mean up in the sky. Oh, sure. Angels. They fly over Juno every night, in flocks. So long, Joker. Anybody here seen Matt Mitchell? No. You seen old Matt Mitchell? Not tonight. Oh, sure. There was a guy like that in here a little while ago. Regular screwball, you know what I mean? Kept talking about angels flying around at night. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody in on that, Mitchell? No. Give me a ride. Hey, honey, I'm looking for old Matt Mitchell. You seen him? He just left. Double right. Where's old Matt Mitchell? How should I know? Old Matt Mitchell around here. Leave the bottle. Saves time. You're a busy guy, I can see that. You used to have a lot of friends in Juneau. Know. I've been looking all over for them. They're gone. They're all gone. Is that a fact? Hmm. It's a sad thing to lose all your... It's a sad thing to lose all your friends. A very, very sad thing. It's sure tough. How'd you like to make a new friend? Who are you? Just a friendly sort of girl. You can call me Nanette. Right, Nanette. Maybe you know some of my old pals. Oh, sure I do. I know everybody in Juno, And everybody knows me. Let's go sit down where we can talk. That's a good idea. Not now. I just caught me a big fish, Mike Trent. A millionaire playboy? That's the guy. I spot him from his picture in the papers.
champagne the best. Of course I know old Matt Mitchell. He always drops in around this time. You just stay here with me. We'll wait for good old Matt together. And good old Matt, you said it. He'll tell me the truth. Everybody else lies, but good old Matt won't lie. And tell me what goes. What goes where? Up there. Way up there in the sky. Hi, V. What are you doing here? Looking for you. Well, that's fine. That's fine. I want you to meet an old friend of mine. What's your name, honey? Honey, this is V. Well, sit down, V. Have a little drink. You've had enough. Mike, why did you do it? Oh, you think I can sit down for things, don't you? Well, that's where you're going. I'm here to find out things. Very important things. Mike, we're going back to the lodge right now. No, no, no. I gotta wait for a friend. Old Maddie will know all the answers. Where? Near the bottle of wine. You're not well, Mike. So you need a nurse, do you, Mike? Who said I need a nurse? I do as I please, eh? That a boy. Better come along with us, Mr. Trent. Didn't take you long to find a boyfriend, did it? Oh, Mike, don't be that way. I'll be anywhere I want to be, see? Listen. I didn't want this job in the first place. And furthermore, let me tell you that I... And furthermore... Well, I'll be right here if you need me. I won't be needing you anymore. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, V. Hey, V, wait. Hey, Mike. Let's have some laughs together. I better go pretty up. Mike! Well, uh, hey, my old friend. Matt Mitchell, you old Wallace, you, how are you? Right, see, I heard about you. Uh, you're up at uh, your pappy's lodge. You know, I, I was going to look you up, but you know, I've been so busy entertaining and celebrate. celebrate. Yeah, that's it. Why do you got to celebrate, you old oh, Wallace, you? Hey. Oh, I'm getting rich, Mike. Uh, I, I, I got to learn how to spend money. You, you sure look like you're in the chips, all right. Ah, uh, play more where this come from. You got yourself a gold mine or something? I'm better than that, see. Do you remember that old broken-down chore of mine? Sure, you taught me how to navigate when I was a kid. Yeah, th that's right. Well, you know, the other day I was ready to junk her. And a couple of the foreigners come in, and they read her. And they're paying me $100 every day. What are they using her for, man? I don't know. Mm -hmm. They ain't using her for fishing. Well, at least not fishing her for fish. Matt. Yeah. I gotta go back to the lodge and find V. All right. You still live in that old fishing shack up the river? Yeah. All right, I'll be up there first thing in the morning. There's a lot of questions I gotta ask you. Uh -huh. Very important questions, Matt. So long, Matt. So long, Mike. Hello, Mitchell. Let you and I have a little chat. Sure, Miss Mary. Sit down and have a little drink. Come on. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we'll have better luck tomorrow. We'll cover this area along the edge of the Taku Glacier. That's Alex. Open the door. Why have you brought him in here? I had to, Colonel. He was shooting off his mouth in the bar. Now, don't push me. I don't like to be pushed. Well, a drunken old fool is harmless. He knows nothing of our plans. Excuse me, Colonel, but he knows too much for our own good. How can he have learned anything? We hire his boat, that is all. But if we let him keep on talking, even to a drunken playboy like Mike Trent, someone may start guessing. He will not talk anymore.
It's all right, Colonel. He'll stay quiet for a while. But he's got the thickest skull I ever cracked. As long as you didn't overdo it. He must be able to walk when we want him. He can stay out under his own. See that there are witnesses when he does. We can dispose of him later from the trawler. Please, won't you? Your boyfriend took it on the lam. Good riddance, if you ask me. It's Turner, Dr. Lawton's mechanic. At last, he's come to us. Bring him in. Mr. Turner, I've been expecting you for some time. You've been away, I presume. Flying around here and there. Very exhilarating air travel. It ought to be. 2,000 miles an hour. As much as that. Sit down, Mr. Turner. So at last you've come to talk business with me. Depends upon how much you're willing to pay. That depends on how much you're prepared to deliver. That works. Flying disc itself? The money's right. I understood you were a believer in our cause. Well, yes. That's why I wanted to give you a chance to bid on it before I took it to some other party. You're a shrewd businessman. Are you dealing in Dr. Lawton's name, Mr. Turner? Dealing for myself. But the goods are in my hands. Dr. Lawton's gone to Seattle to make a deal with the Americans. How fortunate. Then his experiments are finished? Everything's perfect or he wouldn't be trying to sell it to the U.S. And just where do you keep the flying ship, Mr. Turner? Let's uh, talk money first. Oh, let us not quarrel over money. We will pay what is just and reasonable. A million dollars cash? Agreed. And now, perhaps, Mr. Turner, you will tell us where Dr. Lawton has hidden his famous flying saucer. Twin Lakes, the other side of the ice cap. Are you prepared to fly it to Russia? He's gone out the window. Wait, Alex. We'll take care of him tomorrow on our way to Twin Lakes.
Thanks, Matt. You saved my life. Hey, you're all right, young fella. Take it easy. How do you feel, old Tommy? Fine, Matt. Just fine. It'll take more than one bullet to finish me off. Sure. Sure, you're too tough to die. Yeah. Why do those fellas try to kill you? Because they knew about the dinkus, where the saucer was. Where is it? To the side of ice cap. How do I get there, Matt? <laughs> I don't know. Um, unless you flew. No one has ever flew over ice cap. You don't go in dangerous. I'll fly it. Where do I land? Face called Twin Lakes. Twin Lakes. I'll find it. Yeah. Say, Mike, very much. I, I, I got to tell you, there's going to be a lot of trouble. Watch out. Those fellas are. Matt. Matt, who are they? Matt. Pardon me. Have you seen Mr. Trent? No, I haven't. interested in flying saucers. Am I? Uh, have you seen one? Better than that. I've seen the fellow who claims he invented it. What? Isn't that a howl? This screwball called himself Dr. Carl Lawton. He said he flew down from Alaska just to see me. He offered to sell me the whole works for only ten million dollars. Where is he now? Out fighting off the squirrels, I suppose. You actually let him get away? I'm running an airplane company, not a nut house. Look, Fred, I've got to find that man. You really think he's got something? I know he has, and we've got to have it. Haven't you any idea where he went to? Well, he was sore at me when he left. But he said he was going to fly right back to Juneau immediately. 
and I'd be sorry. Well, I am sorry, Hank. All right, Fred. So long. said that no one had ever flown over the ice cap before. I wasn't anxious to be the first one to try it, but Twin Lakes was on the other side and I had to get there in a hurry. I wasn't sure just what I expected to find when and if I got there, but whatever it was, I had to find it. Hey! What can I get a plane? Inside the hangar. Thanks. I didn't outline my flight plan to the officer in charge. His plane was more valuable to him than my neck, so I kept it a secret that I was going to risk both of them. Let's keep moving.
the Twin Lakes, from the air spotted a solitary cabin in the wilderness, a place where someone who wanted to hide something might live in safety. Perhaps I'd find there the secret I was looking for. I decided to fly back to Juneau immediately and get in touch with Hank Thorne in the nearest Air Force base. Wouldn't take long to put the flying saucer in the bag with Uncle Sam pulling the strings. But I soon found out that my gas was running low. Yes, sir, up. I'm going to Juno. Are you in a hurry, sir? Yes, I've got to send a message to Washington right away. Who are those fellows you were talking to? What fellows, sir? The ones you were talking to when I was landing. Oh, they were just some fishermen, sir, asking directions. Where's Miss Lang? In the lodge, I believe. I'll get the gas, sir.
your lot and the Russians will stop at nothing to capture you and your flying saucer. They'll never find the disk, young lady. It's too well hidden underground. Well, that may be true, but you're out in the open. And if they get their hands on you, they may be able to persuade you to tell them where the disk is. Perhaps you're right. They're quite skillful in such matters, I believe. Uh, now, where is this place you suggest we stay until your chief arrives? A hunting lodge up the river. You'll be perfectly safe there. V! Hey, V! Kick her over. Mr. Trent, you've given us a great deal of trouble. Why didn't you stay in New York with your drunken friends of the nightclubs? I sobered up. Mr. Thorne of Washington sent you up here on a mission, is it not so? Never heard of the guy. Come up here for my health. Hmm. A mistake, Mr. Trent. Your health will not benefit, I assure you. Where's the woman who calls herself your nurse? I sent her home. I didn't need her anymore. She'll be back soon, I'm sure. Like you, she's curious about things that don't concern her. There's a plane landing now. Ah, that must be Miss Langley. Come in, my dear. We've been expecting you. And this is Dr. Lawton, I believe. Always a pleasure to meet so eminent a scientist. Turner, what are you doing here? Mr. Turner is now my valued collaborator. Oh, don't look so distressed, my dear doctor. Instead of being used to further the imperialistic designs of America, your invention will now be employed for the good of the entire human race. Russia will never get it. I don't see how you're going to prevent it, Dr. Lawton. And now I think it's time for us all to go. Where? For a little trip underneath the glacier. There is a most interesting passage goes through the ice. We shall part company on the other side. Even the so clever Mr. Thorne of Washington will wonder what happened to his friends.
Turn to your left up there. Line it to Russia. It was only a small bomb, but Turner didn't know it was there. Thanks for watching. Good night, folks.
You're watching, BTV. from Mars. He saw them land from outer space. He saw them capture innocent people only to destroy. <laughs> Father turned against son. People changed into strange, weird animals. A general of the army becomes a saboteur. Trusted police turned into arsonists. The boy's parents changed into killers. But nobody's getting anywhere out there. Nobody can locate anything. Anybody. The Martians. We've got to stop the... Invaders from Mars. Capturing humans at will for their own sinister purposes. Turning them into diabolical instruments of destruction. <laughs> Invaders from Mars. Weird, fantastic beings of a super intelligence. Ruling a race of synthetic humans and pitting them against mankind's dream to conquer the universe. Come on, step on it. Search every tunnel. We gotta find Ronaldo and the kid. When the colonel gives a signal, get back here on the double. of the Central Bureau in Washington, D.C., there was a story so strange in its implications that it defies ordinary classifications. Time, 719. An unidentified object was picked up 200 miles southwest of Point Barrow, Alaska. Height, 75,000 feet. Estimated speed, 5,000 miles per hour. White warning. 754, first interceptor flight airborne. Point of interception, 80 miles due west of San Francisco, California. 7.55, unidentified object past point of interception. Red warning. This is the account of a handful of people who in the course of one desperate night fought off an unknown, unseen menace from another world. Doubly terrifying because it was invisible.
Thanks again for dropping in, and we hope you've enjoyed the evening as much as we've enjoyed having you here. Till next time, please drive carefully, and good night now. is W.